So you might notice the music is a little different today.、Uh, the reason for that is because someone reached out to me. His name is Free the Copyright, and he makes royalty free music. So if anyone who's listening right now is a creator, And likes royalty free music. I know I'm a creator and I'm always trying to find some royalty free music so I don't get my ass sued. I suggest you check this guy's Spotify out. I'll put the link down below. And、uh, yeah, enjoy. He's got some pretty good shit. I'm using it right now. Now, let's talk about the movie Horror in the High Desert. Horror in the High Desert. This was recommended to me by a friend. His name is. Caleb Fitzsimmons, subscriber to the channel, he recommended this movie to me.、Uh, what is this movie? This movie is a mockumentary horror film, and it's about a guy who goes missing. He's like exploring some desert in Arizona, and all of a sudden, boom, he's missing, and everyone's sad, and yada yada yada. That's the premise of the movie. This is a premise we've all seen before. This movie, first of all, I'm just gonna say it right now. If there's one genre I really have a tough time with, it's mockumentary. Because there's just so many limitations to when you do a documentary. So when you inject it with a narrative that's not true, it kind of defeats the purpose of filming a documentary, in my opinion.、Uh, so I'm going into this movie with a bit of a hunch, a bit of a grudge. I'm not one for these horror mockumentaries. Uh, but let's talk about a few horror mockumentaries and how this came to be.、Uh, this all started with Blair Witch. Blair Witch is the one we all remember. But there was a big horror documentary that came out before Blair Witch back in the 80s, and it was called Cannibal Holocaust. And Cannibal Holocaust is, if you guys didn't see this movie, it's a very, very, very,、uh, it's not a nice movie to watch with your mom and dad. Uh, there's some decapitations going on.、Uh, there, there's this turtle scene where they decapitate a turtle. This was back before PETA was effective, which one might argue they're still not effective. <laughs> I like picking on、uh, PETA people, I'm sorry. I'm an asshole! Kill the animals! No, don't kill the animals! So, Cannibal Holocaust, and then after that, you had、uh, this Blair Witch project, which blew up like crazy. Then, after that, you had Paranormal Activity, Paranormal Activity 2, and Paranormal Activity 3. And then you had this whole wave of fucking horror documentaries. Like,、uh, there was、uh, also Cloverfield. Cloverfield was big. A lot of people love Cloverfield, the first one. I'm not that big into Cloverfield, which just goes to show how much I'm not really a fan of that horror documentary style.、Uh, However, I am able to decipher a good one from a bad one. Even though it's a genre I'm not particularly into, I can say, okay, that one is a good one and that one is a not so good one. Like, I'm able to tell, okay, Cloverfield is the better movie than Paranormal Activity 2. Which I don't even know if I watched Paranormal Activity 2. I think I've seen two Paranormal Activities, but there's like 10 movies, so. Take it as you will, folks. All right, all right. Back to Horror in the High Desert. This came out in 2021. Canadian movie. Forgot to write down the director. Usually I have notes when I do these reviews, but、uh, I don't have notes. You see, these, these are the notes for the next review. I had stuff to say about the next movie, but not much to say about this movie because, again, it's just a genre I don't really like. What does this movie do well?、Um, you can tell this is a low budget movie, all right? These guys, these Canadians, they probably had pennies in their pocket and they went and they made a film, and all they had was a camera and a drone. And the drone shots in here are pretty sexy. I love me a good drone shot. Other than that, you know. I'm trying to be、uh, laid on、uh, thin here, uh, Caleb. Uh, I, didn't, I thought this movie was pretty bad. I'm sorry! I thought this movie wasn't too good. I thought the acting was pretty. Uff. What I saw changed everything. The acting was very questionable. And again, because it's such a low budget movie, they're probably casting like the producer's cousin who wanted to be a movie star. And was like, hey, I know a director who's making a movie. And I find like there's a brother and sister in this movie. And I thought the brother had a way different accent than the, six- than the sister. 
which really didn't make sense in my head. They had like very different accents. It might just be a me thing, I don't know. And the thing when it comes to this movie is that the whole movie is a build up to one big scare. And that big scare was pretty good, I'll say. I'm gonna spoil the movie. Basically, this guy goes missing. He's uh, exploring Arizona, the, the woods in Arizona, and uh, he goes missing and he finds this cabin with someone in it. And then he comes back home and uh, people on his blog, he was doing this for a blog, and people on his blog, they're like, ah, it's not true, you didn't record it. If it's not on film, it didn't happen. So he chooses to go back again. And I find at the moment he chose to go back, I feel like that's where you could have started the movie. Because everything up until there was like, just build up. Which I get, you need some build up in a movie, but it's build up where you don't really find out much about your main character. You don't really find out much about the characters other than the main character, the characters being interviewed. So the characters aren't really progressing in the film. So it's just like a long narrative build up that I thought was unnecessary. This is what I would have done with this movie. This is, listen kids, this is how you fix horror in the high desert. You start it from the point he wants to return to the desert, okay? You do that, and you have it a bit like this fucking cat and mouse movie. Because when he's in the desert, and like the creepy guy in the cabin comes out, and he's like swinging at him with an axe, I feel like that was kind of scary. It kind of felt like a cat and mouse. He's like walking around with an infrared camera. And it kind of gave me some Predator vibes uh, in the original Predator movie when Predator is looking down at them and it's like kind of creepy. I feel like that's like the core of the movie, but they should have focused more on that. I do like the message of this movie. The whole thing is that it's not particularly a ghost or a monster or something like that. It's just some creepy guy who was like deformed, who uh, isolated himself from society. And there's a line in this movie where it's like, if he isolated himself from society, there's probably a reason why he did that and you don't want to go fuck that up. Yeah, I get it. But it's just that build up was like more than the movie, which doesn't make sense in my opinion. Caleb, I'm going to make you a couple of recommendations because as I said, although this isn't a genre I particularly like, I can decipher between a good one and a bad one. Uh, first movie recommendation I'm gonna make to you is a movie called Lake Mungo. Lake Mungo. Kind of the same thing, it's about a family and there's some creepy ghost shit going on and yada yada yada. And it's that same documentary, but the scares are more spread out throughout the movie instead of building up to one big scare, uh, which uh, I feel like isn't really effective in that movie. I feel like this movie here, the spread, the scares are effective. It's kind of like, I remember when I was in high school, uh, we used to go on this website called shitbricks.com. I don't know if it's still up, but uh, it was kind of like this meme where like you would like look at a picture and it was written, uh, once you see it, you'll shit bricks. And then you like look at it for an hour and you're like, holy fuck! Uh, Lake Mungo is like that similar thing and I feel like that makes for some uh, effective scares. So Caleb, I suggest you watch Lake Mungo. Another film recommendation I'm gonna make for you. The reason why I don't find documentary horror films very effective is because you can still make some pretty realistic film, even if you don't have that documentary thing going on. You can just make it like a straight narrative and make it super realistic and it will still be fucking frightening. And I'll say even more frightening because you don't have the limitations of a documentary style. And one movie I find particularly frightening because of its realism is the movie called The Vanishing. They did a remake back in the 90s. Not the remake I'm talking about, the original film. I think it's Dutch or German or something like that. Uh, that movie is fucking frightening in my opinion. And it's because it kind of has like the tropes of a realistic documentary kind of film but it's told as a narrative. It's not told as a documentary. Quick fact about that movie that I didn't know until recently. So I knew that they had the movie and then they remade it in the 90s. The movie came out in 88 and they remade it in the early 90s. The fucking filmmaker actually remade his own movie for an American audience and he dumbed it down completely apparently. 
because I was uh, listening to Siskel and Ebert review this movie before I did this review. They were reviewing it and they said that it's from the original director and he just dumbed it down for an American audience. Instead of the elegant, cruel logic of the ending in the original movie, this Hollywood version has been turned into an anthology of cheap slasher movie cliches. For anyone who admired the original film, the ending of this one is almost obscene, suggesting, I think, that cool irony may be all right for the Europeans, but we dumb Americans are such dim-witted Philistines, we need a dumb slasher plot with a happy ending. This movie is an insult to the intelligent. Anyway, I'm biased. Horror documentaries aren't really my thing. Uh, I think they're too slow and it doesn't really scare me. And especially in 2021, where we've had all the paranormal activity movies, we've had uh, all of these uh, Cloverfield and Blair Witch Project and Blair Witch 2 and all these movies. I feel like you have to kind of do something to stand out because the illusion of a real event, uh, people aren't buying it anymore. Okay, like the internet is out there. Well, we know how to decipher real shit from fake shit. And as soon as this movie starts, you can kind of tell it's fake, which isn't the problem I have with this movie. It's just that you can't rely on the trope of like, is this real? Is this not real? Because we all kind of know like, eh, it's probably not real. Okay, that's my review of horror in the high desert. <laughs>